And if the U.S. were to hold 2 million Bitcoin and that Bitcoin goes to $20 million over 10, 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. then now all of a sudden the U.S. would be holding at $20 million, roughly $40 trillion plus. Well, the federal debt today is $35 trillion and growing. Hmm. And there's no way the government can service that debt at current inflation levels interest rate levels. Yeah. Right? And so the minute the US does it, they will now have the ability to project power in the Bitcoin. If the US does it, then everybody else is going to have to do it. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap, is rapidly approaching sovereign reserve status. According to Fred Thiel, chairman and CEO of Marathon Digital Holdings, in a recent discussion with prominent Bitcoiner and podcaster Robert Breedlove, Bitcoin is making significant waves in the U.S. political arena, particularly with the upcoming presidential elections in November. Notably, former President Donald Trump has endorsed Bitcoin and pledged to establish a U.S. Bitcoin reserve. Thiel is optimistic about Bitcoin's eventual adoption as a global sovereign reserve asset. During his conversation with Breedlove, Thiel noted that many of the obstacles previously hindering companies like Marathon from holding Bitcoin, such as regulatory uncertainty and restrictive accounting rules, are being addressed. This shift is likely to encourage more companies to follow Marathon's lead, along with Michael Saylor's MicroStrategy, in adopting a Bitcoin strategy. Marathon has continued to accumulate Bitcoin aggressively, having purchased an additional 4,144 Bitcoin at an average price of $59,500 per coin last month. The company now holds over 25,000 Bitcoin, worth nearly $1.5 billion. Thiel believes that as the U.S. begins to build its Bitcoin reserve, other countries will quickly follow suit driving the price of Bitcoin to unprecedented new heights. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. I think people are beginning to open their eyes. People who run public companies are constantly worried about optics, right? Mm -hmm, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. they have their board they report to, they have their shareholders that they're fiduciaries for. Uh, and so it's not like you run your own business. If it's, you know, if you make a decision to hold Bitcoin using your treasury mm -hmm. for your business, yeah. that's your decision, right. right? And maybe you have some business partners and so you guys get together and you decide. It's very different as a public company because mm -hmm. you have regulatory issues. And yeah. up until not long ago, the FASB rules, the rules about accounting, were that you could only impair Bitcoin when you had it on your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. You could never market to market, right. which meant that you couldn't report a fair estimation of the value of your Bitcoin in your financials, which meant you couldn't borrow again. There are all sorts of limitations yeah. that it causes. Now you can. And so that was a major step. We adopted it for the 2023 fiscal year, which ended in December of last year. And mm -hmm. when we've reported our earnings uh, in our f after our first quarter, uh, we had a huge gain because mm -hmm. we had been marking down the value of our Bitcoin right. for so many years that all of a sudden there was a big gain. So, you know, non-cash gain. Yeah, yeah. But so now companies all of a sudden are seeing that uh, from an accounting perspective, you can hold it. Obviously, from a regulatory perspective, Bitcoin's deemed a commodity. Mm -hmm. So it's not doesn't suffer from the issues. And one of the last real barriers outside of just optics was how do you buy and hold it? Right? Mm. You know, custody. corporate treasurers don't want to have to worry about self-custody. Sure. And you know, even us as a Bitcoin company, um, you know, we use third party custodians. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of it is we want to be able to sleep at night. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to have to worry about somebody sequestering one of our employees. Right? Sure. Um, and we want to have the ability to make sure it's in multiple places so we can use it however we need to use it, if we need to use it. You know, if the U.S. government's going to get ornery with me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff they can do. Sure. Um, the holding of the Bitcoin, you know, we're not exactly going to get on an airplane and leave the country with our Bitcoin right. anytime soon. So uh, we prefer to keep it someplace where it's insured and it's taken care of and mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about it. Um, so now that you can go and buy ETFs, for example, as a mm -hmm. company, um, it's become a lot easier. 
you don't have to worry about security. Yeah. You don't have to worry about all sorts of things. And as you get a little bit more sophisticated, you can then think about, okay, maybe I should even dip my finger into, dip my toes into uh, buying uh, mining companies or MicroStrategy or other companies so I get a little bit more beta. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very interesting. Uh, one of our investors is the state of Wisconsin's investment board. This is a pension fund. Uh, Houston, uh, city of Houston's uh, fireman's pension fund is also another one. They are not, you know, organizations like this are now seeing, hey, you know, Bitcoin has this track record of over time continually growing in value. Mm -hmm. And why shouldn't we hold it? And now there are ways they can hold it easily. And you're starting to see with the ETFs uh, a little bit of institutional investing. Mm -hmm. But the floodgates haven't opened yet because most of the large wirehouses, the Merrill Lynch's, et cetera, um, they still haven't passed compliance on these ETFs. Mm. But the minute they do, and my understanding is many of them are in the process and it's gonna be six to nine months, but even if it's a year out, you've got 40 plus trillion dollars of pension money mm -hmm. sitting out there. Hmm. I've always kind of thought, hey, a 1% allocation would be insane. Mm -hmm. But when I talk to some of the advisors at these big banks who are advising these pension funds, and I said, what are the pension funds saying their allocation would be? And I'm being told it's two to three to 4%. Wow. That's a huge number. Yeah. And so you know, it gets me back to this thing, okay, it makes sense to own a lot of Bitcoin yes. because other people are going to want to own a lot of U.S. spot Bitcoin ETFs have been generating significant buzz among institutional investors since their approval by the Securities and Exchange Commission at the beginning of the year. Despite facing some challenges, such as recent $1.2 billion in outflows, investors remain hopeful. They believe that funds like BlackRock's IBIT and Fidelity's FBTC will facilitate the influx of billions and eventually trillions of dollars into Bitcoin and other digital assets in the coming months and years. According to prominent business executive and investor Fred Thiel, traditional investors, including pension funds and large hedge funds, are ready to allocate up to 4% of their substantial portfolios into Bitcoin ETFs once major wirehouses begin listing them. Thiel is not alone in anticipating this historic shift. Bitcoin ETF issuers, such as Bitwise Matt Hogan and ARK Invest Kathy Wood, have predicted that this development could drive Bitcoin prices above $100,000 per coin. The U.S. is the single largest holder of gold in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the dollar is not backed by gold, mm -hmm. but gold allows the U.S. to project power into financial markets. Other countries hold gold as their reserve. And actually, it was the holding of gold that drove Nixon to decouple the dollar from gold mm -hmm. because other countries were withdrawing their gold from the U.S. system mm -hmm. uh, because they saw the spending that was going on at that period of time, and they thought the U.S. would go bankrupt. So the U.S. holds, government holds a lot of gold. They're the largest landowner in this country. They own about 28% of the land in the country. Um, and what recently happened was the expiration of the petrodollar, mm -hmm. which was this agreement where the commodity producers would price their commodity in dollars in protection for... Um, in, in exchange for protection from the U.S., and then they would invest that in treasuries, right? Mm. Um, that's now gone. And so we've seen the U.S. as a reserve currency drop uh, in significance, and it's now down sub-50% mm -hmm. uh, as a holding asset. The Chinese now buy gold instead of treasuries. Uh, Japan, which was one of the biggest buyers of U.S. treasuries as they were going through uh, their recent uh, financial situation have now also tapered. Um, comically, one of the largest buyers of treasury bills, which are short term, is Tether. Right? They, they're the sixth <laughs> largest buyer. They buy at a nation state level. How ironic. Right? And so the U.S. needs to fund its debt somehow. And if people aren't buying dollars or putting things in dollars, that is a precarious situation. So that leaves the U.S. with only a couple of alternatives. They either have to let the dollar drop in value significantly and have high inflation so they can inflate away the debt, but that would be disastrous. The other thing they can do is they can invest in an asset like Bitcoin, which will over time appreciate in value. And if it can appreciate at a rate faster than the U.S. total debt appreciates, then now you have something you can use to offset the debt over time. Mm. And if the U.S. were to hold 2 million Bitcoin, 
And that Bitcoin goes to $20 million over 10, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Then now all of a sudden, the US would be holding at $20 million, roughly 40 trillion plus. Well, the federal debt today is 35 trillion and growing. Hmm. There's no way the government can service that debt at current inflation levels, interest rate levels. Yeah. Right? And so the minute the US does it, they will now have the ability to project power in the Bitcoin market mm -hmm. because they will have pricing power because of their supply, mm -hmm. just like they do with the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Why does the administration sell oil out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? To drop the price of gasoline to lower inflation. Mm -hmm. right? Why does the Strategic Petroleum Reserve exist? Well, it was to protect us from price shocks in the outside market. Well, today the U.S. is arguably the largest oil producer in the world. Mm -hmm. And so they have the ability to not suffer the consequences of high international oil prices in the same way. But if the U.S. does it, then everybody else is going to have to do it because you can't be a country and not have a strategic reserve of Bitcoin if all the other countries have it. Right. And countries like Russia, China, and others look at Bitcoin as a neutral currency that isn't controlled by a government or a country, that allows them to trade independent of any sanctions the U.S. Mm -hmm. would ever do. And so if the U.S. wants to keep them from trading in violation of sanctions, they have to also have enough Bitcoin so they can impact that market. According to Fred Thiel, buying and holding Bitcoin could soon become a matter of national security for countries, much like how we currently view commodities like gold and oil. However, this scenario can only materialize if a developed nation, such as the United States, adopts a Bitcoin strategy and begins purchasing Bitcoin regularly. This move could prompt other countries, like Russia and China, to follow suit. Thiel believes that adopting a Bitcoin standard would be a strategic step for the U.S., potentially helping to resolve the country's massive $35 trillion national debt swiftly. Not only would this allow the U.S. to maintain its position as the world's largest economy and superpower for a longer period, but it would also set the country back on a growth trajectory and help restore the American dream. Please share your thoughts on Fred Till's interview in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.